Okay, good day, everyone. So today we're going to look, take a look at one of the suggested videos by one of you. Um, and this question asks us, well, tells us that the quadratic equation 2x squared plus 6x plus 7 equals 0 has roots alpha and beta. Calculate the value of 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. And the second part asks us to determine the range of values for, of x for which the quotient is bigger than zero. So, um, first I want to look at some background information and this may lead us to something very interesting. So let's take a look at it. So suppose, um, we have a quadratic equation, a general one, x a x squared plus b x, plus c equals zero. Now we do not want a to be equal to zero because if a is equal to zero, we just have a linear and we want to deal with quadratics. So what would that mean? If I divide by a, I get x squared plus b over a x c over a is equal to zero. Now, what does, what, what does this help me with? Well, let's label this as one. Now, assuming that I could factor this, find the roots of this, that would mean, so let's say, let alpha and beta be roots of this quadratic. So that means, since they are roots, that means the, if I plug in alpha for x, I get zero. Or if I plug in beta for x, I get zero. So that means I can write my quadratic as x minus alpha by x minus beta. But of course, this is equal to zero. Now, if we expand this, we will get, by just foiling it out, we get x by x is x squared. Um, x by minus beta is minus beta x minus alpha by x is minus alpha x and minus alpha by minus beta is plus alpha beta. Now that is equal to zero. We could clean this up slightly. We could just factor these, these terms here. So we get x squared minus, we could write this as alpha plus beta times x plus alpha beta. Now we assumed, we'll call this two, we assume that we had two general um, quadratics, this one and this one. Now, the interesting thing happens when we compare the equations side by side. So notice we both, the both of them had an x squared term. Now, it would be nice if this b over a was equal to this minus alpha plus beta. Because that way, I would say that the sum of the roots is equal to b over a, which is the coefficient of x. Similarly, if c over a is equal to alpha beta, which is the product of the roots, I should be able to say, well, the constant is just the product of my roots. And this is, this is exactly what is going to happen. We get that alpha, b, um, alpha plus beta is equal to negative b over a. We just write the negative on that side. And that alpha beta, is equal to c over a. Now, this is something called Vieta's formula, which is spelled Vieta's formula. And it extends into cubic. Um, let's just write this a little better. It extends into cubic and um, quartic and so on, quintic, all of those. Right, so Vieta's formula. So knowing this, we could use this um, in our question, that the sum of the roots is equal to b over a, let me drag that back up,
I'm not going to change it to blue. Okay, let's just rewrite it. So we have alpha plus beta. is equal to minus b over a and the product is equal to um, c over a. Now you may ask how would this help us? Well, this is what we are trying to find. We have one over alpha, so let's just box this so we can use it after. So we have one over alpha plus one over beta that is equal to, if you find out LCM, we have alpha beta at the bottom and alpha into alpha beta is beta and beta into alpha beta is alpha. So we have beta plus alpha. We could rewrite that because addition is commutative. We get alpha plus beta over alpha beta. And look at what we have. We know what alpha plus beta is. We know what alpha beta is. So now we could solve our question. So in this question, we have A is equal to two because it's the coefficient of x squared. B is equal to six, because it's the coefficient of x. And C is equal to seven, because it's the constant term. So we have alpha plus beta is equal to minus six over two, which is equal to negative three. And alpha beta, which is the product of the roots, is equal to C over A, which is 7 over 2. So we have that 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, which we just saw is the sum, which is negative 3, divided by 7 over 2, which is equal to negative 3 times 2 over 7 write this tree as three over one. So we have that the sum one over alpha plus one over beta is equal to negative six over seven. And that concludes the first part. Now the second part. Now there are two ways of going about this, both of which will give you the same result. We have two X plus three over x plus one, and we need that to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we multiply by a negative number, we would have to switch the, neg the, the inequality. And furthermore, we do not want x to be equal to, um, well, negative one. All right, if x is equal to negative one, that gives a zero in the denominator, and we know we cannot divide by zero. So how do I get rid of this denominator? Well, I can multiply the top by x plus one squared and this one by x plus one squared. Now, what good would that do me? Well, x plus one squared is always positive because a square number can never be negative. And furthermore, x is not equal to negative one, so that is never zero. So I could cancel one of these with this one. And well, zero times that will be zero because, well, um, zero times anything is zero. One's that thing is not infinite. So we have two X plus three times X plus one needs to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. Now, how can you get something greater than or equal to zero? Well, you need it to be positive. So that means either this is positive and this is positive. So that means 2x plus 1 is equal, is, um, is positive. That means it's greater than or equal to 0. And x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which means that 2x is greater than or equal to negative one. That means X is greater than or equal to negative one over two. Similarly, that means X is greater than, well, we know it cannot be equal 
because we set that up here, x cannot equal negative one. So that needs to be greater than negative one. So to solve the, the equality. Now, if you are greater than negative one, if you, if you draw the number line here, this is zero, this is negative one, this is negative a half. So that means we want to take the intersection. So that would be this portion here. That would, that would mean that x is greater than or equal to negative a half. Now, it have another case, right? If you all allow me, if I have enough space right here. The other case would be if they are both negative, because a negative times a negative will give you a positive number. So that means it's either, well, we look already all here, 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. And x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. So that means that, oops, sorry, I didn't notice I had a 1 here. Allow me to fix that. Should be a 3. Should be a 3. Right, which would imply that we have negative one and a half. So that's right here. Right, so let's just fix this one. So notice that it would not be a half, it would be negative three over two, which is there. Now, what would that imply? Well, we cannot have negative one. Right? We could have x, that would imply that x is greater than negative one because we have to take the intersection. So this would mean that this one, x is greater than negative one. Right? Because we need to get all the values that intersect both of them. And in this case, x cannot be equal to negative one. Similarly here, we have x, is less than or equal to negative three halves and x is less than well negative one it cannot be equal to negative one so if you were to draw the number line again this is zero this is one well negative one and this is negative three over two it's less than so that's this way and notice that we can shade it because it is equal but at one at negative one we cannot have that so we need the intersection. The intersection would be x is less than or equal to negative three over two. So this is our solution. If I can write it right here, this means that either x is greater than negative one or x is less than or equal to three over two, negative three over two. And that concludes this video. I hope it was enjoyable and I hope it made sense and helped you all. So this concludes the video and I'll see you all in the other one. Thank you for tuning in.